All right, so uh, this is tutorial number two in our action script for game series. Now, I'm not going to have as long of an intro. I'll try not to bore you, um, but uh, we're going to be talking about functions. This is an introduction to the functions in the most basic sense, and it may seem like a big jump from for only being the second tutorial from our simple Hello World app in the first tutorial, but it's so crucial to almost everything in programming that we're going to build on towards making a game that I think it's the right time to cover it in its most basic sense and I'm going to go real slow so fast forward as you like I will not be offended in fact I won't even know if you fast forward it that's technology so what I've done is we've got our same project file as our first tutorial but I've added some things so Here's our first frame code. Same thing you recognize. Now we've got our text box, remember our dynamic text box called hello underscore txt. Now what I've added is two keyframes, one at frame 45 and one at frame 90. Now I, my, my frames per second for the project file is 30, so I figured it'll be up for a second and a half each change, give you enough time to see it. So. At frame 45 in the timeline, I'm issuing a different command to this dynamic text box here, just like we were doing in the first tutorial, but it's a different string. It's a different piece of text. Instead of saying hello world, I'm saying hello again. And at frame 90, a second and a half later in the timeline, I'm issuing a third string command, third text <laughs> command, leave me alone. Because who wants to keep saying hello? It just gets annoying, right? So leave me alone. So you've got three commands spaced out a second and a half in time. So if I play this, it's going to loop, first of all. But you're going to see it change each of the three commands. Hello world, hello again, leave me alone. Hello world, hello again, leave me alone. Hello world etc. Well, that's going to be painful if I keep saying that. Huh? So we've got three separate commands at three separate points in the timeline. So what if we wanted to do something that you've probably done a thousand times before you ever even knew you were a programmer. When you were just an animator or you're making web pages or whatever it may be with Flash, stop. Now this is a function, believe it or not, stop is a function. And the easiest way to know if something's a function is by looking at these parentheses right here. Because guess what? Trace is a function. So I actually introduced you to functions in the first tutorial and I didn't even think about it. So this signifies that it's a function, these parentheses here. Now. You probably know what stop does, but it stops the timeline, the current timeline, which in this case happens to be the main timeline. So we're now, because the stop command's here, we're not going to get to these frames. So it's only going to say hello world because it's not playing. See? It's not, it's not playing. It's a static frame. Now, what if we wanted to say, we don't want to say hello world. We just, we just wanted to be grumpy. Well, we won't be grumpy yet. We'll be grumpy soon. But uh, we wanted to first jump to the middle keyframe. Now, what I wrote here, go to and play, which takes, this is a function that takes a parameter, which I'm not going to go into now, but keep in mind, keep that word in mind, because this function takes a parameter. And that parameter happens to be an integer, a number, 45. So I'm telling it, go to and play and the frame number, which is 45, which is where my second keyframe is that tells it to say hello again. So because this code is before this, all code, by the way, is read top to bottom, which is why these numbers also are become useful. So it's never going to get to this command because before it does, it's going to be told 
to go to frame 45. Now this is another function. Go to and play, go to and stop, stop, play, trace. They're all functions. So what you're going to see now is you're not going to see hello world. You're going to see that second statement. And because it's looping, you're, you're never going to see hello world. Hello again, leave me alone. Hello again, leave me alone. Rinse and repeat. So what's happening is I play my movie, go to frame 45, ignore that command because you didn't get there, at frame 45, write hello again in my dynamic text box on the stage. There's the name, as you know. And play from there because it's go to and play. So it cues that command, plays for a second and a half, and then is told at frame 90 to change to leave me alone. And it loops, so it actually does loop back to frame 1, but you don't know that from watching the movie because you're not going to see it change text. That makes sense. I hope it does. So that's a very simple way to use Flash's built-in functions and their built-in classes these are all concepts that I want to put in your head that I'm not going to get into, but go to and play is a function that's part of a class, part of an object that Flash has built in for you. Now we're going to be writing our own functions in the next tutorial, very simple ones, but that's what we're going to be doing. So just put this in your head that this is a function, it controls the timeline. And by the way, another way to signify functions and is these lowercase first letters of the first word is lowercase. And then usually all letters of the next words are uppercase. The, this two is not, it's not it's lowercase, but usually first letter, lowercase, then you start the next word. It would it'd be uppercase for each first letter to help signify a function and distinguish it. Thanks for watching.